If you're watching TV in Singapore, you might see a seemingly random combination of words flash up on screen, like bullet head, sea mackerel, and water world. These are military code words designed to be a signal to members of Singapore's reserve troops to mobilize at army bases across the city. If that seems unusual for a small, prosperous country that's at peace with its neighbors, that's because it is. A city-state that's around the same size as New York City has built one of the region's most advanced militaries. Here's why this tiny island became one of the most militarized places on Earth. In 2022, Singapore's defense budget was over $11 billion, ranking it per capita among the highest in the world. By comparison, Turkey, a country with a landmass 1,000 times larger than Singapore, only spent $10 billion. Singapore is possibly the most densely defended country on the planet, with more troops, tanks, warships, and aircraft per square kilometer than any other country you find in the world. Despite close economic links with China, it has deep defense ties with the US, buying billions of dollars worth of American military equipment. This is the F-35, one of the most advanced fighter jets in the world. Singapore has ordered 20 of these planes and will be the first and only country in Southeast Asia allowed to operate these jets, cementing Singapore's Air Force as the most advanced in the region. Singapore's drive for military supremacy can be explained through its geography. It's surrounded by much larger neighbors and sits on the Strait of Malacca, Asia's most important shipping corridor and a vital entrance to the South China Sea. Singapore's founding prime minister said that in order for the tiny nation to survive, it would have to become a poisonous shrimp, meaning the island would have a military so powerful that larger powers would think twice before trying to attack. Singapore sees its defense investments as a signal to foreign investors that this place can be defended. Singapore has spent so much on defense that its military assets now far outweigh many global powers. Its navy is increasing its number of submarines to eight, more than both its much larger neighbors, Malaysia and Indonesia, have combined. The country currently has more than 170 operationally ready tanks. That's more than the United Kingdom which is the world's sixth largest defense spender. In addition to the latest technology, all Singaporean men serve two years of mandatory military service. The history of small states is that, short of outright aggression, there can be an escalation in a period of tension where military force could be used as an instrument of diplomacy to coerce a smaller party or less defended party to abide by your whims. Singapore is a resource-scarce nation largely dependent on imports for its water, food, and energy. And its small size puts it at a military disadvantage. If you want to understand why Singapore is concerned about defending its territory, then you don't have to look any further. This is the Singapore Strait. It's one of the world's busiest shipping lanes, and it also represents Singapore's southern border. And just right over there is the heart of the city. That is the central business district, and that's where all decisions are made. In military terms, Singapore lacks what's called strategic depth. This means there is little geographic distance between a nation's borders and its critical assets, such as financial centers and offices of state. Singapore's northern border is just 28 kilometers away from the country's southernmost point, meaning its armed forces have little room to maneuver. The country has four air bases, but Singapore's airspace is so small that pilots on training missions at some bases have less than a minute after taking off to turn before they enter Malaysia's airspace. It puts the impetus on the ability to strike hard and to strike fairly far to keep hostile forces at bay and, if necessary, to bring the fight to the enemy. Singapore has tried to counter this strategic weakness by identifying civilian infrastructure that can be repurposed in times of conflict. Two of its main highways can be converted into runways for jet fighters to land, should military runways be taken out of action. Apartments and houses built after 1997 are required to have personal bomb shelters, and subway stations can be converted into emergency shelters. The government has far-reaching powers to repurpose civilian infrastructure and requisition vehicles, ships, and aircraft during a conflict or crisis. 
and that crisis may be fast approaching. In February, Singapore announced it was increasing its defense budget amid concerns that the U.S. and China may go to war over Taiwan. So I've reversed my assessment for today's generation in Singapore and elsewhere. The risk of regional and even global conflict, even in the next decade, has become non-zero. I do not make this assessment lightly. Singapore has tried to strike a military balancing act between the two powers, conducting joint drills with their Chinese and U.S. counterparts. The U.S. military is allowed to use a port and air base in Singapore for its activities in the South China Sea, making the island a key transit point for U.S. aircraft carriers operating in the region. When someone doubts that Beijing would sit back and acquiesce if such bases are used to support the American presence in and around Taiwan, in the event of, uh, let's say, a period of tension. Being a small trade-dependent economy, we will not escape any fallout from any Taiwan-China fracas. For Singapore, building up its weapons arsenal and flexing its defense readiness allows it to continue playing an outsized role in an increasingly volatile region.